welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is March 12th, 1955, and the title is The Trial. Let's get into it, and thanks for listening. Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters. This is it. L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Watering the prisoners? I haven't got any prisoners. Oh, well, then you're falling down on the job. Offhand, I can think of a dozen men around Dodge that ought to be in jail. Well, why don't you give me a list, Doc? I'm going to need somebody to bring to trial next week. That's so? What do you mean? Well, there's a new circuit court judge coming. He's going to be disappointed if there's nothing for him to do. A new judge? Mm-hmm. What happened to Judge Brooking? Oh, he needed help, I guess. After all, he has to cover about the whole of western Kansas. Well, who is this new man? What's his name? I love the name of Judge Stokes. That's all I know about him. Oh. Well, I hope he's a good one. I've seen some remarkably unlearned judges in my time. <laughs> oh, it's not an easy job, Doc. And out here, it doesn't pay enough to make it worthwhile to most men. Judge Brooking could probably do twice as well back east. Yes, and so could I, Matt. Yeah, I know, Doc. But uh, then you wouldn't have anything to complain about. <laughs> you would shrivel up and die if that happened. Well, at least I wouldn't go to the pauper's grave I'm headed for now. Uh, lend me a hundred dollars, will you, Doc? Uh, I will lend you a hundred. Go on in, Homer. Uh, oh, Mr. Dillon. Doc. Yeah, all right, Chester. Well, who's this you got, Chester? Uh, this is Homer Tisdale, Mr. Dillon. There's a complaint against him. A complaint? Yes, sir. You know Van Walcott, who's taking over that little store next to stage office? Yeah, I know him. Well, sir, he's coming over here in a few minutes. He claims Homer was trying to rob him. Oh? I figured it'd be best to settle the thing right here with you. Were you trying to rob him, Homer? Yes, sir. With a gun or what? No, sir. I've got no gun. Huh. You were trying to steal something out of his store, is that it? Yes, sir. Where are you from, Homer? I haven't seen you in Dodge before. No, sir. I've been homesteading in the Saline River. I got starved out. I had to quit. Mm -hmm. Didn't have no luck at all. Well, you sure don't look as though you'd been eating very regular. No, sir, ain't. Well, you got him here. Yes, I got him here, Walker. Dirty little thief. Marshal, I want to sign a complaint against this man. Mr. Walcott, you've been in Dodge about a month now, haven't you? What's that got to do with it? Well, back east, I guess they're a little more formal the way they handle things. Now, why don't you just tell me what happened, then? Well, I was next door at the stage office talking to Jay Buford. 
We heard a crash over to my store, something falling. So we run out, and there he was. We caught him red-handed, Marshal. Caught him doing what? Stealing, that's what. Well, you haven't told me what he stole. He had a whole handful of potatoes, Marshal. The man's a thief, and he belongs in jail. Is this true, Homer? Is that what happened? Yes, sir, Marshal, it's true. I was hungry. I seen them potatoes. I thought he wouldn't miss a couple. I, I, I could pay him back later. A man who steals belongs in jail. He shouldn't have done it, Walcott. I admit that. Then throw him in jail. I, uh... I can't do that. Why? Well, for one thing, Chester and I have got to ride up to Fort Larned for a few days. There wouldn't be anybody here to watch him or feed him. Leave him some water. It's all he needs. Chester. Yes, sir. Take Homer over to the Long Branch, will you? Maybe Sam Noonan can put him to work sweeping out or washing glasses or something. Huh? Now, look here, Marshal. You ain't going to make a fool of me. Get going, Chester. Come on, Homer. Now, look, Marshal, I'm telling Mr. you... Mr. Walcott. Why don't you go back to your store, hmm? Maybe somebody's found a few pennies and wants to buy that handful of potatoes. This is it, L and M filters. It stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor. L and M's got everything. It's the best. Yes, L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L and M stands out for flavor, 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 flavor. The miracle tip draws easy. You enjoy all the taste. And notice how mild it is. L&M stands out for effective filtration. 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 No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. L&M's got everything. L&M. Light and mild. America's best filter tip cigarette. Doc was right. There probably were a dozen men around Dodge that should have been in jail. But if the law was going to start locking up men like Homer Tisdale, I figured they wouldn't need me to handle the job. At least that's what I thought on the way to Fort Larned. It was four days later when we got back, and I found out different. We were riding up Front Street, past the stage office, when Jay Buford, the stage company manager, and Van Walcott spotted us, started yelling. I had Chester take my horse while I got down and went over to see what they wanted. All right, you came back just in time, Marshal. If he'd done what I said, it wouldn't have happened. I was just telling Walcott, if you didn't get back today, we'd have to do something ourselves. What's the trouble, Buford? Murder. Murder and robbery, Marshal. Right there in the stage office. Charlie Reynolds is dead and $10,000 is gone. Happened this morning. Hold up. It was about 8 o'clock, Marshal. And I just opened up my store and gone into the stage office to say good morning to Jay. He was standing there talking to Charlie Reynolds. And I no sooner got inside than the voice out back yelled at us to throw up our hands. And we did, too. And then this gunman come forward wearing a mask. Knew right where the money was, too. I had it in the treasure box waiting for the stage to go north, Marshal. He opened it up. It, it was all bills. And he scooped him out into his pocket, and then he stood there, Marshal. And he told us not to try to follow him. And then before he could even move, he, he pulled the trigger on poor old Charlie Reynolds and killed him. Just like that, no reason at all. You didn't follow him, he got away. Who's going to follow a killer like that? We ain't crazy. Any idea who it was? You bet we do. Who? That mask didn't hide nothing. Well, who was it? Homer Tisdale. What? Plain as day, even if he hadn't spoke. Homer ain't so meek as he looks, Marshal. He's a killer, that's what he is. All that other's just pretending. You should have put him in jail first off. Any idea where he is? Must be halfway to Texas by now. But you better find him, Marshal. Yeah. 
Homer's a mighty cool one if he's still in Dodge, Mr. Dillon. Well, maybe he hasn't heard about it yet, Chester. You don't think he did it, do you? I uh, will ask him if he's in here. There he is. Sweeping out back them tables. Oh, hello, Marshal. Chester. Hello, Homer. The feller's looking for a drink. It ain't ten o'clock yet. Uh... Homer, how long have you been here? Well, I've come to work about 8.30, Marshal. Why? Where were you before that? Out back. Sam lets me sleep in the shed he's got out there. Homer, can you prove that you were out there at 8 o'clock? Did anybody see you? Oh, no. Nobody ever comes out there. Why, Marshal? Well, the stage office was robbed this morning, and a man was shot and killed. Jay Buford and Van Walcott witnessed it. They say you did it. Me? They're willing to swear to it. Well, I didn't rob them. I didn't kill nobody. I wouldn't do nothing like that, Marshal. You don't believe them, do you? It doesn't matter what I believe, Homer. But there are two witnesses and you haven't even got an alibi. Well, Marshal, I was right out back there. I, I was... I was eating a little bread and some bacon a feller gave me. How about will you promise me something? Why, sure, Marshal, what? That you won't leave Dodge. Oh, I'm... I'm in bad trouble, ain't I? Yeah. Well, I won't run, I promise. <laughs> Three days later, Judge Stokes' circuit brought him to Dodge. I went over and talked to him about Homer Tisdale. But it was like talking into a rain barrel, or rather a whiskey barrel. The judge seemed to have more interest in corn liquor than in the law. And all I could get out of him was that a jury would have to decide the case. So the following Monday morning, court was opened in an old dance hall across the railroad tracks. A jury was sworn in, and Judge Stokes took over. First, he put Van Wolcott on the stand, and then Jay Buford. Chester and I sat with Homer and watched. Hey, Marshal, there's something I, I don't understand. What, Homer? Well, this judge, he, he's been talking to Wolcott about me, and now he's going to talk to uh, Buford? Yeah. Well, ain't he going to ask me nothing? Oh, sure, he'll put you on the stand, but uh, you'll have your own lawyer to help you. Well, what? Uh, that man sitting right over there, he's the lawyer the judge appointed to defend you. Oh. Well, how can he help me? He ain't even talked to me. He won't know what to say. Well, he will talk to you, Homer. I guess there's no hurry about it. Mr. Dillon, I, I never seen that lawyer before. Did you? No, he's a stranger to me, too, Chester, but uh, Judge Stokes seems to know him. <laughs> well, what I don't understand is why they ain't no persecutor. <laughs> it's prosecutor, Chester. But I asked the judge about that, and he said that now, there was no need for one. Well, I guess he knows what he's doing. Uh, Buford's sworn in now. Let's listen. Now, Mr. Buford, we've heard the testimony in detail from Mr. Wilkett. So, to speed things up a little, I'll just ask you a few questions. Yes, sir. You were at the stage office when the holdup took place. Right? That's right, Your Honor. And you saw everything Mr. Wilkett saw. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. The bandit came in, took $10,000 in bills out of the box, and then shot and killed, what's his name? Charlie Reynolds, Your Honor. Charlie Reynolds. All right, Mr. Buford. Now, I want you to tell the gentleman of the jury who that bandit was. It was Homer Tisdale, Your Honor. Homer Tisdale. How'd you know it was him? Well, he had a mask on, but it didn't really hide nothing. It was him, all right. Besides, it was his voice, plain as day. And you knew him before? Sure. 
The day we caught him robbing Walcott's store. He's been a thief ever since he come to Dodge. Oh, now, look here. Your Honor. You're out of order, Marshal. Your Honor, he's giving the jury a wrong impression of this man. Sit down, Marshal, or I'll hold you in contempt. That's better. The jury is competent to judge the evidence, Marshal. All right, Mr. Buford, you may step down. Yes, sir. We'll now hear from the defense. Take over, Mr. Ship. Yeah, but, Marshal, he didn't ask me nothing. You said he would. Wait a minute, Homer. Let's see what your defense says about it. <clears throat> may it please the court and the gentlemen of the jury, you've heard the evidence. I rest my case. Well, why, why, that ain't no defense, Mr. Dillon. What's he mean, Marshal? He's sitting down already. Mr. Dillon, he can't do that. Silence! Marshal, he's in the court. Silence! And the jury will retire to consider the evidence. And it will return with its verdict in, say, a half hour. And it had better be the right verdict, or I'll hold you all in contempt. Now get to work. I don't understand this, Marshal. I thought a man had a right to say something for himself. Yeah, so did I, Homer. Well, now, that, that defense feller, he sure didn't help none. He... Where's Judge going now? Outside for a drink, I expect. Well, you wait here with Chester. Well, you talk to him, will you, Marshal? And tell him I didn't do it. I'll be back. Have a nip, Marshal? Uh, no thanks, Judge. I always like to get the jury out. It gives a man time for a little refreshment. That's good corn you make here. Yeah. You know something, Marshal? I'm a drinking man, but I've never been drunk in my life. Never once. Well, that's fine, Judge. Marshal, I'm sorry I had to sit you down so hard in there. But a court's got to be run by one man, or it'll get out of hand. I know. I've seen it happen. I've seen some things happen in court, too, Judge. But I never saw an accused man not get a chance to defend himself before. You heard the evidence, Marshal. What defense could he make? It'd just be a waste of time. Oh, I see. <sighs> Yeah, I want to get this trial over with. I got to take the Santa Fe up to Abilene at midnight, and that doesn't give me much time to see Dodge, does it? No, no, I guess it doesn't. In fact, the uh, half hour is too long for that jury. I'm going to call him back now. You'll excuse me, Marshal? Sure. Oh, maybe you'll change your mind and have a drink with me after, hmm? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> He sure didn't give that jury much time, did he, Mr. Dillon? No, he didn't, Chester. Marshal, what do you think they'll say? They haven't much choice, Homer. Well, gentlemen, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Let's hear it. We find the defendant, Homer Tisdale, guilty. Homer Tisdale, stand up. I ain't guilty. I didn't do nothing. Stand up, Homer. Go on. Well, it ain't fair. Homer Tisdale, you've been found guilty. Where's the money? What did you do with that $10,000? I ain't got it, Judge. I didn't take it. Honest. Silence! Since you won't tell us where you buried that money... I'm going to sentence you. For robbery, you get 20 years in prison. 20 years? But you'll never serve them, Homer Tisdale. You're a double-dyed monster. 
and your hands are steeped in human blood. Creatures of your like aren't fit to live away with you. For murder, I sentence you to be hanged by the neck until you are dead. Sure, I Court didn't. dismissed. Marshal! Marshal, did you hear? Marshal, did you hear what he said? Well, I ain't never seen nothing like that, Mr. Dillon. There might just as well have not been no trial at all. Take Homer to jail, Chester, and keep him there. Marshal! It ain't right, Mr. Dillon. It ain't right at all. Do it, Chester. Yes, sir. Where are you going? I'm going to have a drink with Judge Stokes. What? Yeah. We're going to become real good friends. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L and M's got everything. 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 Best flavor. L and M stands out for flavor. The miracle tip draws easy, lets you enjoy all the taste. Best filter. L and M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L and M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobaccos? Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L and M tobaccos. Light and mild. Every way, L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. How easy they draw. How mild they are. L and M's got everything. King size or regular, L and M is America's best filter tip cigarette. Have another drink, Judge? No, no, no more, Miss Kitty. I've got to be going. Ah, oh, go on, pour him one, Kitty. He's got an hour yet before his train leaves. Sure. You'll have another, Judge. But... Yeah. You can't sit around a whole hour without a drink. But I told you... Aren't that... you enjoying yourself, Judge? Oh, it isn't that, Miss Kitty, but... I haven't been alone all day or all night. Well, it's been my pleasure, Judge. I don't often get a chance to be with a man like you. Yeah, I know, I know. There must be things you have to do. I don't feel right taking up your time this way. No, don't worry about him, Judge. People don't get real serious about breaking the law around here till after midnight anyway. <laughs> I'll put you on the train, Judge, and then I'll get to work. No, no, I don't want anybody to put me on the train. Uh, It's less than an hour now. Marshal, I insist I go alone. I'm going to leave now. Well, it doesn't take that long to get to the depot, Judge. Well, I I want to walk. I want to walk around a little first, by myself. I like being alone sometimes. Everybody does. Well, okay, Judge. I understand. You go on alone, if you want. Uh, uh, I'm grateful to you, Marshal, for all you've done. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you, Miss Kitty. Goodbye, Judge. Look me up when you come back. And of course, goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Marshal. Goodbye, Judge. Let me know when he goes out the door, Kitty. I will. I don't know what this is all about, Matt, but I hope I did what you wanted. Now you were a real help. It got pretty tiresome till we came in here. There he goes, Matt. You better hurry if you're going to follow him. Yeah, well, I'm going to pick up Chester first. I think I know where the judge is going. I'll see you later, Kenny. Sure, Matt. <laughs> Gracious, you must have drove him crazy, Mr. Dillon. You dogging him around that way. Well, it worried him some, Chester. That's how I knew I must be right. Here we are. We'd better watch through the side window and they'll see us. Yeah. Can 
you see anything, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Yeah, they're in back there. And that's Judge Stokes with them. All right. Come on, we'll walk right in the front door. Now, look, Chester, you get to one side when we go in, huh? Yes, sir. Who's that out front? Hi, Dad. It's Dylan. What's he doing here? Well, I thought you wanted to be alone, Judge. Shoot him. Shoot him, I tell you. He knows. Well, Buford, walk it. Which one of you is going to shoot me, huh? One of you must have a gun somewhere. You shot Charlie Reynolds. No. All right, then get your hands up while we search you. Uh, I got a gun, Marshal. Here. I'll give it to you. Get his gun, Chester. It's still in his pocket. Yes, sir. Well, how much money did they give you out of the 10000 Judge? I... I don't know what you're talking about, Marshal. But I'll have you in court for this. I'll be in court with you in front of Judge Brooking. You overplayed your hand today, Judge Stokes, you and that bought defense lawyer. And I'll find him before the night's up. You wouldn't dare arrest a judge. You ever heard of such a thing? Well, now, I guess maybe a judge is a pretty important man, isn't he? He certainly is. Yeah. Well? I'll tell you. Since you are the most important man here, I'm going to give you a cell by yourself. You can have Homer Tisdale's. He won't be needing it anymore. Now, get moving. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. If you're a filter tip smoker, you should be smoking L&M's. When you try L&M's, the first thing you'll notice is how mild they are, how easy they draw. With L&M's pure white miracle tip, you enjoy all the taste. Try L&M's today. You'll like them. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hadley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, John Daner, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Smoking with a smile with Chesterfield, smiling all the while with Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Put a smile in your smoking by Chesterfield. So smooth, so satisfying. Chesterfield. You'll also enjoy Chesterfield's great radio show. Perry Como sings all the top tunes on CBS Radio every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Jack Webb stars in Dragnet on Tuesday nights. Check your local listings. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the Western Frontier when Marshal Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's drama. It's gun smoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.